Here is the Great Basin Fire potential briefing for Sunday, June 11th. Looking right at our impacts map uh, for today, uh, we are looking at significant winds across parts of eastern Nevada into a good portion of Utah. Uh, breezy but cooler and more moist to the north. Uh, these winds, especially in the southern half of this area, could gust over 50 miles per hour with extremely low humidity. Uh, that is the bad news. The good news is this should be hopefully the last day, well, probably Monday across uh, southeastern areas uh, before we get into a quieter weather regime. But for the next 36 hours, uh, significant wind issues across much of our area. Uh, looking at the past 24 hours, uh, precipitation-wise, we're looking at uh, just some scattered light showers, just a few hundredths of an inch over parts of the uh, northern Great Basin, otherwise mostly dry. On the lightning map, we can see that uh, we did have some isolated lightning in far northern areas. Uh, by and large, most of it was up in the Pacific Northwest. And fire activity has been picking up over the past few days. New fires in the red circles, uh, uh, existing fires in the yellow, and we've had a couple of larger ones, especially down in uh, uh, parts of southeast, uh, southwestern Utah and down into southern Nevada, uh, a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand acres, so the grass is starting to uh, support the fires. If we look at the observed precipitation the past seven days on the left, quite dry across the southern half of the area. Just some light precipitation over northern areas, so overall just about everyone is pretty dry except uh, parts of uh, western and northwestern Wyoming for the most part. Past 30 days though, there was some significant precipitation in the past month, uh, probably going back about three or four weeks ago across the northern half of our area. The darker green to yellow uh, indicates anywhere from one to as much as two inches of rain in some of those areas. But again, some areas in our southern third of our region have not had much precipitation in the past month. And we can see that reflected in our ERCs. Uh, uh, for the most part, uh, it's the southern third to southern half of the area, especially the further east you go, that a lot of the ERCs are getting to their 70th and into their 80th percentile. So combining that with the fact that uh, we have a better than normal grass crop in a lot of areas and that's starting to cure out, uh, that is supporting our current fire activity. Here's a look at our satellite imagery with upper level maps superimposed. You can see unseasonably deep low pressure, more typical of February than June. Across northern California, uh, clouds, showers, uh, rain and snow in the higher elevations. But it's the tight packing of these height lines you see here uh, that indicate the strong wind field that we're expecting today across the Great Basin, especially eastern Nevada and through Utah and the Arizona Strip. Uh, clouds and showers with a front here across northeastern Nevada and into southern Idaho and parts of Wyoming. So here's a look at our weather map on the left-hand side for this afternoon. Deep low pressure over far northern California, tight wind gradient with those uh, tight uh, yellow height lines. You can see the dry punch of air across our southern areas. We apologize, our significant uh, seven-day fire potential product uh, not working due to technical difficulties, but you can see where our concerns are of uh, the strong wind field today. Uh, all through this orange area. Of course, this will continue on Monday. Uh, any winds up here will be uh, negated by uh, fairly high humidity and some scattered showers. So if we go to um, our wind and humidity, you can see here the strong belt of winds. Uh, these brownish uh, colors here indicate winds in excess of 50 to maybe even 60 miles per hour. And even these purple areas further east, uh, wind gusts of 35 to 45 miles per hour. You can see in the areas of orange and red where the uh, dry humidity lines up with these winds. And of course, further north and west where they do not. And then on Monday, this low pressure uh, centered uh, right over southern Idaho, northern Nevada. Uh, where you see the green, it'll be cloudy and overcast, cool and showery. Still a bunch of drier air to our south, and uh, it'll be this area to the east of this dashed line where we'll continue to have some concerns with wind and low humidity uh, on Monday. And you can see here the area of lower humidity, single digit to low teens, where you see these uh, reddish to orange areas. Elsewhere should be moistening up, and you can see that uh, concentric belt of winds will be these uh, winds in eastern uh, Utah uh, and to an extent down towards the Arizona Strip that we'll have to worry about. 
On Tuesday, that low pressure system moves out and away, some dry air to the south overall, but we'll uh, finally start seeing the uh, winds start diminishing across the area. Still a bit gusty from the northwest, uh, change in direction behind the front in the afternoon, but that'll come with somewhat higher humidity you see here in the green uh, daytime humidity, 25 to 35 percent. Uh, still dry down south, but the winds down there uh, should be decreasing fairly significantly. Precipitation over the next three days uh, could be quite significant across parts of western Wyoming and uh, the mountains of Idaho where they could see an inch to locally two inches of rain and snow levels possibly down to around 6,000 feet so there could be uh, five to as much as 10 inches of slushy wet heavy snow on the upper slope so quite a change in the landscape through there. And then going further down the road, again, we apologize, no significant fire potential product is available, so just focus on the left-hand side. The upper-level maps indicate that we're in between low pressure over the Gulf of Alaska and high pressure to our southwest, so no significant uh, weather going on here through Wednesday. Uh, similar pattern on Thursday, some clouds to the north. Uh, again, on Friday, same thing. We actually have high pressure starting to build in, so even though we don't expect much wind, it should be getting hotter and drier across at least the southern half of the Great Basin, and uh, that trend uh, will continue on as we go into uh, Saturday. Uh, high pressure uh, maintaining warmth and dryness, but still some moisture and clouds over northern areas. And look at precipitation over the next seven days, and again, most of this will be in the short term in the northern areas. Uh, southern areas continue to remain dry. Our 8 to 14 day outlook, taking us from June 18th through the 24th, a signal of much hotter than normal weather across uh, much of the Great Basin, especially southern areas, a signal of normal to drier than normal, so looks like our fuels will continue to dry on out. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.